this is Chris Greer with Packet Pioneer, and I just wanted to take a moment to shoot a video about how to use TCP timestamps. Now, if you've never seen these in a trace or seen these in the TCP header, very useful timestamps that Wireshark adds and really can help us to troubleshoot. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we can find these in the first place. So in this trace file, uh, it's just a basic trace that I took sitting here on my laptop, went out and hit a couple websites, and I can see here this is one of the first SINs that I see. So I'm going to take a look at that SIN packet, come down to the detail view. Now if I expand out TCP and come down just below the flags, or flags, options, down here at the bottom of the TCP header I have timestamps. Now this is a Wireshark added thing. This isn't an actual part of the TCP header values. Now we can see under timestamps, we have time since first frame in this TCP stream. So since this is a TCP sin, this is the first packet of this TCP stream, so that's zero. And the next measurement or the next value we see is time since previous frame in this TCP stream. So I'm going to take a look at how we can use these and uh, leverage this data that, or these measurements that Wireshark takes and be able to use this to troubleshoot or take a look for some slowness. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look a little further down in that same TCP conversation. And we can see how these numbers increment. So I am still unfiltered. I have not filtered on this TCP conversation. I just went down a few packets that I can see clearly are a part of that conversation. And I can see that time since first frame in the TCP stream, 75 milliseconds. And down below, there's my delta time between packets in the TCP stream. Now, I know up until now, you might have seen this on other videos of mine, or maybe you use it yourself, uh, how we can add the delta time column, and we can get similar types of measurements when we're filtering on TCP conversations. But what can be nice about these measurements is that we can use these, and we can find throughout the entire trace file where we're getting hangups in our TCP streams but not having to use that conversation filter to go through and each stream and try to find these one at a time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on the time since previous frame in the TCP stream. I'm just going to add that as a column. Now what that will do is it'll then allow me to sort on that value for the entire trace file unfiltered. So if I come down here, and let's go all the way to the bottom of the trace file. What this does is it shows me for all TCP conversations in the trace, which packets had the highest value for this time since previous frame in the TCP stream. Now, right away here, I can see that I have a few fin packets. So these are packets that are closing down the conversation that this packet happened in. So that's actually a common thing to see. Uh, we, uh, we see some amount of activity go on in a TCP stream or a TCP conversation. Things are exchanged, and then the connection on one side or the other gets shut down. So I'm not super worried about this just yet, unless I'm in a period of my network where high delays between the last packet of conversation and the fin would be a problem. Maybe I have a server that's overloaded and it's not shutting down connections fast enough. Or maybe between a server and a database, I don't want to see really um, uh, idle conversations in that location. Now for me, I'm just, I just grab this between a client and a front end web page. So I'm not super worried about that just yet. Another thing that I can look for in this conversation, just above this, I can see that I have in the three and four second range, I have several gets. So that means that this conversation was held up about four seconds before the get was sent. So let's just take a look at one of those. I'm going to right click on one of those, come down to conversation filter, let's go to TCP. Now keep in mind when you're doing this kind of analysis, especially when you sort on one of these fields, like I did with the time since previous frame, um, we need to make sure that we reset or reorder the number the packet numbers in order for this to make sense. So I just set a filter for every packet in this TCP stream and if I come over here this is where I can see that four seconds. That's the same value that I can see in the delta time. So we can see up above this that a conversation was in play. Uh, there was a get and then we saw a response come back from the web server and then data came across. 
I didn't see any, any hangups here. And then I come down and that's where I see that four second. Now, that's something that I'm not super worried about because of the context. Uh, keep in mind, I was just going out and pulling down CNN.com. But if I come over here, I can see that this four seconds is suffered on the client side. So really, this is just client wait time. So after one transaction had completed up above and the final act went, we just had four seconds of non-use of this connection. I just didn't do anything. The client didn't send the next request off to the server uh, for four seconds. So because of my context, I'm not super worried about that. I'm not troubleshooting any major uh, delay or problem. So be careful when you're using measurements like this that you don't uh, troubleshoot something that really isn't a problem. In this case, this is just client-side inactivity. The client simply didn't do anything for four seconds. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. But where I do want to watch out for these types of delays, and this would be trace file wide, is if I saw that four seconds on the packet below. This is on the response. It's coming back from the server. This is on an actual HTTP 200 OK response code. Those are the kind of things that cause performance problems and slow down applications. So that's going to be where I look for delays specifically using this column. Now just to back up and review for a second, I'm going to remove this conversation filter. And I'm going to resort on the time since previous frame. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of the trace file once more. So this is again where I can see the longest delays or the longest holdups in my TCP streams for this trace file. Again, the things that I'm going to watch out for, not so much on the client side, the delays, I want to see server side delays. Uh, here I see a couple of three second retransmissions. Uh, I definitely want to take a look for things that are not thins, uh, resets, or gets. Uh, like for example, one more thing, just one more quick thing we'll take a look at in this video. I can see on this packet right here, this is a sin ACK. That means the sin was sent 1.58 seconds before I got the sin ACK. Let's go ahead and filter on this conversation and take a closer look. And I'm going to come over and make sure that I have the, the number column set properly. So here I can see that the client sent a sin to this server for port 80. And I didn't hear back from that server for over a second and a half. I did hear back. The connection was established. But that's a pretty large delay when I'm just sending up a TCP handshake. So especially if I can control each end of the connection, I have both the client and access to that server, this is where I might want to take a look at my network between these two endpoints and see if I have any congestion or any other reason why I would see such a high delay in my TCP handshakes. So I hope this video gave you some ideas as far as how to use these timestamps that Wireshark puts in the TCP header. This is very useful for finding delays or holdups in TCP streams for an entire trace file without actually needing to filter in on an individual conversation to start out with. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel and we'll see you on another video. Thanks for watching.